fasten your seatbelt. It's gonna be a bumpy walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Like, you know, what could you say? I doubt it will stand up to something. I haven't been disrespectful to you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. That's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Oh, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Rumble, Rockfin, everywhere fine podcasts are sold. Only a couple, couple more, five more days till Christmas. Who's ready? I'm not. I spilled coffee all over my laptop. So, yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun couple weeks. Um, guys, there will be a couple more chances to see me do stand up before the end of the year. If you're based in New York or New York City, uh, I'll be at the Grizzly Pair in Midtown on the 28th, doing the 8 and 10 o'clock shows, uh, mostly to get ready for my show on the 29th, which will be Gino Bisconti's birthday show at Stand Up New York, one of my favorite venues in the city with one of my favorite comedians. There will be a bunch of comedians from Compound Media at that show on the 29th, like Keanu Thompson, uh, I think Bobby Tamburo, Gino, Steve Conti. It's going to be fun. So if you're a fan of Compound Media, come to that show. And then if you're a fan of stutter the Stuttering John universe, the Dabbleverse, we will be having DabbleCon <laughs> in the beginning of February, February 3rd and 4th. We'll be in beautiful, exotic Rochester, New York for DabbleCon. There will be uh, stand-up, live podcast tapings, uh, the Dabby Awards, a VIP meet and greet. And all of these events will be held at Comedy at the Carlson uh, up in Rochester. And then I'm doing a weekend in San Diego. Uh, February 24th and 25th at the Mic Drop Comedy Club in San Diego. So if you want to get tickets to any of these events, go to my website, chrissymayer.com, please and thank you. Before I bring on our very cool, very talented guest, I want to do a quick shout out to our sponsor. For without them, we would not be here. Let's play a fun christmas song whoa what's that the holidays are here and you're anxious and your family's making you angry and maybe your dad told you in may he had a gay experience and it's still fucking with you well guess what cushy dreams is here to help uh cushy dreams is number one for smokable cbd flour and delta eight you know how their stuff helps us with sleep relaxation feeling good and more yeah because it does you know how you wanted Cushy Dreams to come out with gummies? Not just any old gummies, but gummies that light up your brain like a Christmas tree and make you feel all giggly and warm and fuzzy and awesome. Well, they did it. Cushy Dreams now has Delta 9 THC gummies. Yes, Delta 9 THC. That's the real deal. OG THC, and it ships legally to you. Each gummy contains 10 milligrams of THC, and they come in four euphoric flavors like strawberry, sour watermelon, green apple, and tangerine. There's also this very cool artist series. My favorite flavor is the watermelon. I also really love their pre-rolls because they come in these different blends. Uh, the CBD pre-rolls, the energy, dream, create, create, relax, hustle. So whatever you want to do with your day, whatever vibe you're seeking, Cushy Dreams is here to help. Go to CushyDreams.com. That's K-U-S-H-Y Dreams.com. At checkout, use promo code CMP to get 20% off your next order. Good for your first order, second order, etc. Get your gummies today with promo code CMP. Full flavor, full spectrum, full flower. 
beautifully, beautifully wrapped products. Makes a good stocking stuffer. I don't know. Stuff your own stocking. I don't know. Do adults even have stockings? Okay, enough of that. CrushyDreams.com. K-U-S-H-Y. Dreams.com. Use promo code CMP. Please and thank you. Okay. I'm very excited to bring in this guest because he is like fresh off of Tim cast. He's all over the place. He is the lead singer for all that remains. Uh, and, and I'm going to, he's a libertarian. He's a triple threat and he lives in New Hampshire. And we're going to hear <laughs> all about lots of cool stuff. Uh, Phil Labonte. Hello. Hello. Hello everyone. How are we? I am so excited to have you here. It's very exciting getting you right off Timcast IRL appearance. I feel <laughs> kind of like, whew. I was on Adam and Sitch right last now. night, too. I was on uh, Adam and Sitch. Uh, they have, there are two guys that have a podcast, uh, or Sitch and Adam, whichever one they, they want to argue about. Um, they I'm have a podcast. Well with Lilo and Stitch. I'm not familiar. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you know who Sargon of Akkad is? Yes. Okay, yes, so, he was just on Friday Night Tights. Okay, so Carl is... I. Uh, Sitch and Adam are kind of in the in Carl's uh, circle, so okay. I know that's how I found out who Sitch and Adam were from Sargon. So that's kind of the, they're kind of the same thing. They do really long streams, like they get on. I was on for like four and a half hours, and they went like until like three in the morning or something like that. So like really, really, really long streams twice a week. But they're that's, a lot of fun. I'm smart learning. guys. Uh, my uh, tolerance for long streams it, I'm working on it like I used to sweat two hours <laughs> I was I was used to just you know do a compound media show that was an hour I could do 45 to an hour of stand up like and that's where I topped off but yeah. since now getting more involved with people who you know they've been streaming many more years than me uh you know you get on a stream with like yellow flash or nick ricada like those yeah. guys go Woo, ricada can hours. Go. they'll go through the night <laughs> yeah and i'm like doesn't ricada have like a day job too but like i mean i suppose he doesn't really care much about the day job with how busy he is uh, on his stream but still it's like he's a like i i not that i want to poo poo creators because obviously i'm a creator myself being in a band but like you know when you have like a grown up lawyer job, you think grown up lawyer things like I'm in a band. So like I don't drink anymore. But when I got drunk at work, it was fine. Rick, you kind of don't think that he's going to go into court drunk. You know what I mean? It's like wow. there's a certain amount of grown up uh, expected of him. But, you know, so. And Mueller does 11 hour streams. Yeah, I, I feel you on that because I uh, I've kind of always had a day job up until last December. This is like my first full, full year without a job. Mm. Uh, cause I got fired cause I wouldn't take the vaccine. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm done here. I guess I'm done being a professional secretary and I'm going to do this <laughs> full-time podcasting thing. But I've always felt like I've had this like double life and you have to hide your personality from your mm -hmm. job. And it just time and time again, the degree to which I was myself at my day job would, the sooner that happens, the sooner they're going to find a reason to fire you. And it's yeah. just. So when you have someone like Nick, but he like owns his own business, he, yeah. you know, he's a, he said that he makes more doing YouTube than I am a lawyer. I, so. I imagine he should be sending very nice gifts to Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> that trial, <laughs> that trial put a whole lot of dollars in Nick Ricada's pocket. Should yeah, send him like, him. You know, I'm, I'm not, he, but he a, should send him a nice basket every, a, every year at basket, Christmas. It should be a nice gift. A nice like, basket with a Kyle. gun in it or something. I don't know. Whatever kind of <laughs> box of ammo. What, whatever kind of guns the kids are into these days. <laughs> uh, just kidding, of course, YouTube. Um, I know because I know you're a you're a gun person. You're a two A enthusiast. I am a I am a self defense enthusiast. I'm a Bill of Rights enthusiast. I'm a uh, I guess I describe myself as romantic for anarchism. Um, basically libertarian. Uh, very willing to work with Republicans or Democrats if they're looking to advance individual liberty. Uh, recently, in the past, you know, a lot recently for a while now, it has not been that the Democrats have been looking to advance individual liberty. Um, they're looking to advance uh, special interests, uh, gr like group interests and stuff like that. Um, so I tend to be more uh, sympathetic to Republican ideas nowadays um 
but I will call myself a full on anti communist. So I love that. that. Uh, I, that's that's straight. I, there's no I don't mince words about like I'm I'm, a, I'm an anti Nazi. Absolutely. Anti fascist. Yes. Um, and I'm an anti communist because people forget that there's a lot of fascism involved in communism. So, yeah. And these days, if you're all three of those things, that means you are against our current government. <laughs> no, you know, I, I, I'm a fairly liberal minded dude, right? Like I think that liberal policies are, are pretty good. Um, I like small government and stuff. So yeah, that's my, that's my political kind of philosophy. Anarchy would be cool if it wasn't for the fact that there's always someone that's going to stuff their dick in the mashed potatoes. Right. I, I, and, and that, that person needs happens, the back of the hand. Right. And and we're not just talking about drunk uncles at the holidays. We're talking about, <laughs> you mean like someone who's going to fuck up. I think most people, I think the like cause real which harm. we can be more self-sufficient. Yeah. And cause real, but people always make the, the argument against anarchy, like, well, who's going to pay for the roads? <laughs> yeah. The same people that pay for the roads now, dummy, because the government doesn't have money. So. <laughs> I want to but, get into your musical background. Did you always want to be a singer? Did you? And you were playing a little bit of guitar that I didn't really hear because I yes. put you on the spot because you were just killing time because I was running late. But have you always been? Oh, have you like, checked your Twitter, music? by the way, since we started? Um, uh oh, why did you send nudes? I tw no, but I tweeted at you <laughs> like right when you were going through your uh, your your intro and stuff doing the doing the ad run oh. which, <laughs> which the another thing is like your ad it's hilarious there was something about the ad that just struck me as really funny like i'm i'm like i, I feel like it's illegal to run those ads and i know you said they're they're legal <laughs> but i'm just like why, why do i feel like this is gonna you know the feds are gonna kick down her door because of sometimes this, you know? I, I would get dinged like you you just have to be careful in how you because they're total it is totally legal but you do have to be careful in your phrasing mm. uh because you and you also YouTube doesn't like you to like they don't want you to show any type of smoking like marijuana okay it's not what this is this mm. is just CBD it's not gonna get you high it's just gonna relax you good stuff yeah yeah <laughs> so anyways <laughs> no. right, so yeah i'm i'm I, my musical background um i've been playing guitar since i was 14 um not enough to consider myself uh in a position to really perform um but i use it i i play guitar much better than i play piano but i play piano so that way i can communicate with other musicians right like i can i can read a little bit of music i but it's like like if a four or five year old would have to sound out words, that's mm -hmm. kind of how I read music. I'd have to figure out, okay, that's the, that's the staff and that's a B that's, an, you know, and figure out what chord it is by like, it's similar to the way that a, a child would have to sound it out. Um, but I do understand, uh, you know, some theory and, and so for me, it's just to be, to be able to communicate with other musicians. Um, that's pretty and cool. Been, it's like being able to speak a couple different languages. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, it's hard when you get someone in a a band that doesn't know anything about music. And there's been a couple people in that I've tried to work with oh. that no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but that 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 had different levels of knowledge. And when you we're not super complex when it comes to bass, right? So like you should know how to play the songs. And and when you're like, okay, how does this go? And you're like, well, it's in this key. And the person doesn't know the notes in the key. You're like, all right, you can't communicate, right? It's like you're talking to someone that doesn't understand the language. So you just want to be able to, to be, I, I just want to be able to, to understand what someone's saying. I'm, I'm not going to be able to tell you, you know, I don't know all the modes and I, I don't know the, you know, the difference between Lydian and Mixolydian or, or Dorian and, and stuff, but I can, you know, I can understand when someone's talking about music and I understand keys and, and stuff like that. So. That's pretty cool. I wonder if the girls' names Lydia and Dory are at all. Like, <laughs> no, because Dory is a small boat and I don't Dory? know what Lydia's based from. Based I don't know. Google knows, and I'm sure that sure there's someone in the chat that'll look it up. Google Dory the Dorian mode. Where does the name come from? Dorian mode. No, not you. So the chat. The chat. I'm busy. That's Someone's right. You're working, man. Because <laughs> you know they're they're just hanging out. 
Um, yeah, so, get yeah, your hand out of your pants and Google something, chat. <laughs> uh, you know, like there's so much stuff that like your history, like with with like the the with with Anthony Camille. I knew Anthony when he was on Opie and Anthony in oh, Boston, wow. or I knew who they were because I'm from New England and I'm that age. Oh. You know, it's like you know Anthony's obviously older than me, but not a whole ton. And so I used to listen to Opie and Anthony all the time when they were on on in Boston. And I was a, I was a, uh, I subscribed to Camille Media for a while and stuff. And I, you know, I watched, I used to watch Gavin McGinnis piss everybody off. Uh, oh, wow. Stuff. Compound. Yeah. Cause Gavin yeah. had his own show. Yeah. I don't know if it was Get <clears throat> Off My Lawn. He had his own remember. show on Compound Media. Then he left and started Censored TV. And now yeah. he and Kumia do every Wednesday together, which is a great, which is a great collab there. Still on Compound Media? Yeah, still on okay, Compound. Cool. They maybe a few months ago, he's Gavin started regularly coming on every Wednesday. Cool. I think Anthony's freaking hilarious. You know, I've I've always thought that that you know I've, I've kind of not closely followed, but kind of kept on tabs and and stuff. And and I think that Dave Smith and the Skanks are great. Like you know, uh, so I've been I'm kind of like I've known about like you for ages and then when i saw you start going on to like the simp cast because i know britney i know who again don't know these people but i know who britney venti is and i've mm. talked a little bit back and forth with her and i think she's hilarious and she i know she is she's, she's so uniquely hilarious me. like she's she not can. trying to make jokes but the way uh, that she's no. <laughs> so honest uh, I adore she her. has that she's like great. autism humor like she's yeah. just, and and really all that is that just boils down to honesty basically yeah. and and when because females we sometimes have the uh being pleasant disease and we will mm. like soften the blow of something as to not hurt someone's feelings but not like Brittany. she has none of that which i love because I, I, I have that <laughs> i love her i think she's hilarious um i i think melanie's great melanie mac is great uh that star world's girl she like so like all these people that like you're familiar with are people that i've been listening to and I, again i listen to your podcast and stuff so th this is all people that i've been listening to and paying attention to for ages and ages and ages i think the first time that i went on tim's show was like two years ago now maybe th oh, two and a half wow. cool. so you know it's been it's been a while that i've been listening to podcasts and stuff and i mean i met milo and went and hung out with milo before trump was elected oh, like wow. in 2015 or two yeah it's 2000 2015 right i think it had Maybe to have been. I got my show there in 2019. <clears throat> I met Milo once at Compound Media Studio because he was renting out that studio to do his show. And okay. I remember the booth was like kind of annoyed because he required a whole completely different setup. They had to push <laughs> like the regular L-shaped desk out of the way. Oh, to, no. They had to put down like a fluffy carpet and like <laughs> loungy chairs for him. And they're like, we got to do Milo's setup. And I met him at Compound, and he, he couldn't have been less interested in me. But he, on the other hand, like, his energy just takes oh, up God. the room. He's very, like, you can't ignore him. Mm -mm, and no. uh, I was like, oh, I'm Chrissy. Like, I have a show on this network. It's called The Wet Spot. He's like, ugh, what a dreadful name. That's disgusting. <laughs> ugh. He's like, you're turning off the very people you're trying to attract. And he just had nothing <laughs> horrible things to say uh, and, i think uh, it's a great name but yeah <laughs> i think i also think that milo's re reaction is perfect like it's so perfect uh, so perfect uh so i you know so this has been like, like you guys and and the whole like youtube podcasting world and stuff has been something that i've been at, at the very least paying attention to and, and listening to and 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 involved in in the conversations on twitter and stuff for a long time so that's really good. Do you, because I are you familiar with um, Winston Marshall? He was the banjo player from Mumford and Sons. Yep. He basically, like, a, what a couple of years ago, tweeted out that he bought Andy Ngo's book, yeah. read it, loved it, yeah. and he was sort of canceled from his band. Like yeah. he, he, I think left of of his own accord. But they basically like made him leave. It, like, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. Mm -hmm. But he was he really got shit for. For saying he liked a book. So yep. have you ever experienced anything like that where you feel like you have to hide oh, yeah. your political feelings? No. Any, has anything ever happened to you? Any kind of backlash from expressing any opinions? So I've been an openly politically libertarian dude since like 2008. So I was wearing a Ron Paul shirt uh, in 2012 when 
when uh, he was running against uh, Barack Obama. And I wore, in like 2013, we're on tour with Volbeat and we're playing the the Naval Yard in Brooklyn. And I on stage, I wore a shirt that had Barack Obama's face and it said poison. Like, like <laughs> it was, the, yeah, like it was like one of those kind wow. of things that, that you would expect to, to see, see the future, George basically. Bush, right? Yeah. And I was walking around Brooklyn and I was getting looks like, what is wrong with him? Like I had a penis growing out of my forehead and they're just like looking at me like I was crazy for wearing that shirt. Because um, everyone loved Obama <clears throat> at the beginning. It was like, wow, yeah. he's uh, what my grandma would call black but nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't stop saying grandma. that phrase. She'd be like, I came back from church. I met a new friend, Chrissy. He was black but nice. <laughs> but, uh, like, just so you know, like, not one of them. <laughs> Like <laughs> easy grandma. What the hell? Like, Grandma's like, I didn't wonder where my wallet was the whole time. <laughs> God. That's fun. So uh, you yeah, you you were so a yeah, Ron I, Paul I, supporter in twenty. I was getting hell the entire time because the whole like I if you you can there's an op ed I wrote um that was run in AP, I think. Um about uh because Paul Ryan had used I think it was a Rage Against the Machine song in one of his things. And Tom Morello took issue with that. And then, so I was just like, Tom, like, and Tom Morello just was like, you know, we're leftists. And essentially he was talking about, you know, the left. And I'm like, look, he's talking about all these things, but he's just talking about like the other side of using the, the government for, of using government force is essentially the argument I was making. Mm. I was like, he's, he's not making an argument that's, that's, you know, from any kind of, He's not making an argument that it's immoral to use force or to use violence or whatever. He's making an argument that it's that Paul Ryan is wrong for using force and violence against uh, in in places I don't like. So it wasn't some kind of actual moral argument. It was just, oh, my preference. You know, it's like the boots fine where but it's where you're putting the boot that matters. Uh. You, you can put the boot down on the, on the right, but you can't or but you can't put it down on the left is essentially the argument that that Morella was making. And so I took, I did that. i put it, you know, put an op-ed basically talking about that. And, you know, it got run in AP and, you know, as soon as I kind of did that and was like, you know, came out and said, I was like, Tom, Tom Morello's a communist and a fool. Um, and that didn't go over well because, you know, you, if you call, if you call someone a communist back then, it was like, Oh, prove that he's a communist. And was yeah. It <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I talk, that's another thing I've talked about. The I wrote another uh, op-ed piece about uh, set the Second Amendment and about where the right to bear arms comes from and why, you know, it's a natural right and, and it's not a, um, you know, it was, it, it was obvious that the founders intended for the population to be armed with military arms because they had just defeated the most powerful government in the world using arms equal to the arms mm -hmm. that that government had so that's that was that's the context that the second amendment was written in we just got done with wow. an actual real war with the most powerful government on earth and they wrote the second amendment saying we want to make sure that our posterity has the same capabilities that's the long and short of it right all the yeah. other arguments surrounding the second amendment is in my opinion it's all misdirection the the point of the second amendment was to make sure the population had guns so they can shoot at the government if the government becomes tyrannical because Oversteps. that's what they had just yeah if if they overstepped the law that because that is what they had just done to the british that's the whole story mm -hmm. and anyone and that does anything else it's it's misdirection and trying to trying to you know trying to spin it so that way they can use the government authority to take the the arms away from people. You know what I mean? So. Oh yeah. And you'll, if you listen to the way our government, like the press secretary or like basically the way our government is talking about, like we have to take away guns because they'll always use an example of a mass shooting. Uh, and then you hear someone who's lived in a, in a communist or like socialist, you know, state, they'll say this is the exact same type of language that was used before they took away all our guns. And yes. It's, it's just we don't see it because we lived in this country our whole lives or we're too young to know history or we don't have friends that have lived in places like Venezuela or whatever. So mm -hmm. it's it sneaks up on you. Yeah. And and I mean, we can I can 
go over the arguments, you know, until I'm blue in the face and, and I know the, the nuance and, and stuff. Um, so I'm not going to bore everyone, but you know, those, those are the things that, that matter to me. The fourth amendment matters to me. The fact that civil asset forfeiture, the, the fact that people don't talk about that enough, that drives me insane. You know, the government can literally just take your stuff, accuse you of getting, of acquiring whatever it is through illegal means like if all they have to do is say this that we're taking from you we think that you used illegal means to acquire this or to acquire the funds so we're just taking this away and you can't have it but we're not going to charge you with an actual crime because we don't have That's any evidence wild. that you did anything nobody talks about the fourth amendment no, no one does. And it drives me insane. And and that's a clear violation of the fourth and the fifth amendment. But like, that's what police departments do nationwide all the time. And for some reason, courts continue to allow this. Now, some courts have, have, you know, some judges have said, no, you can't. And there have been, there has been some success in trying to push back against it because whenever any average person hears that the government is, has a case that's the, the state of Can just for an example, I'm only using Kansas because it just popped in my head. I don't know what their laws are, but it's the state of Kansas versus $25,000. That's literally how it looks in the court. So the, the you can't have the state prosecuting an inanimate object, but that's what they do to make civil asset forfeiture, like to, to justify it. And it blows my mind. Um, so stuff like that, those kind of overreaches that, that, the average person doesn't really think about those kind of things just drive me nuts. And, and I, you know, I can, I can go on and on and on about all the, the kind of small little tyrannies that your average person has to deal with on a day to day basis. Cause they, you know, they can't just say, screw it. I'll deal with the fine, which right. anything, anytime there's a fine for anything, anytime there's anything that they just say, there's a fine for it. That means it's legal for rich people ha. because right. I have definitely broken the law knowing that the fine was coming, saying, I don't care. I'll pay the fine because there, there's been times when I'm on 95. I used to I used to be married to a woman that lived in, in Virginia. So I used to drive up and down 95 all the time. And sometimes if I didn't have cash, wow, right through, didn't care. They got my license. That stuff will come to my house. I don't care, whatever. And, you know, that's the way that it goes. It's like. I got the 10, 20, $50 to not worry about it. But a poor person, they can't get away with that crap because 50 bucks can ruin their month. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's groceries for some people, or at least it was when the dollar was worth more. I don't know if it's groceries anymore. Right. And they had that recently, what was it, Venmo, that they said they could basically fine you uh, yeah. like a couple thousand dollars if they, if they just – like a total bullshit reason. I think it was – PayPal said that right, it was it was, it was PayPal. Yeah, it was PayPal. And it was like, if we don't like something you're Pay doing, we can something. just take your dollars. It's like they got the idea from Patreon because that's why Carl got booted from Patreon. Carl uh, Sargon of Akkad used to have a Patreon account right. and he said the wrong thing off of Patreon. He said it's somewhere else. And Patreon was just like, get out of here. And they booted him. That's unbelievable. See, but I know the deep lore. Way more believable. We're getting a lot of Fun comments in here about uh, Tom Morell. Morello's parents were rich. He went to Harvard. That's before he became a millionaire rock star. Yeah. Uh, Morello probably wears Che Guevara shirts and berets. One hundred percent. He there's <laughs> absolutely pictures of him. And I, I don't. I really don't want to turn this into Tom Morello thing because it'll turn in. It'll it'll become you know Phil's calling out because it's probably already going to be Phil's calling out Tom Morello. Already. No, this is barely a call out. This well, is, well, you know, if if nobody comes out with a good record, uh, you know, for a week. The, the blogs have to say something and they already don't like me. Believe me, there are blogs out there. They hate my guts because the blogs, they're the, the metal blogs, the metal press is just like every other genre of press. So like, you know how like in the gaming industry, there are some people that are very far left that are in the mm -hmm. press and, and they've gone after people in the gaming world that they, the same thing happens in the, in the music industry. There was, there's a couple blogs. Comedy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So there, the left goes after anyone they don't like and they use the media whenever they can so, when did you start to see this happening particularly in the music industry in well i wrote it in 2006 we were released a record called the fall of ideals and that was the first time that i smelled this when i was writing that record the whole point of like the thing that i was thinking 
in that record. If you listen to the record, overwhelmingly, the record is about self-empowerment, right? The song, there's tons of songs about, like, you can do it. Just put your, you know, you can do it. Just, like, all self-empowerment. I can do this. I can do, you know, get up and go. Super, super posy kind of thing. The title of the record, I came up with it because I felt like the stuff on the record about you can do it. You can go out and bust your butt and work hard. I felt like those were the ideals that the U.S. was kind of founded on. And those were the things, the individualism that comes along with that kind of stuff, that belief in self, in, the, in, in yourself, was starting to become out of fashion. It was not, it was, you know, it wasn't cool to be like, I can do this. You know what I mean? It wasn't cool to believe in yourself. And it's like, if you look at the way that, nowadays it's it's 15 years later but like everybody like people specifically people i think that are that are left leaning but a lot of young people are just so depressed and have mm -hmm. you look at the way they talk about themselves and they're like i'm miserable and i can't come up i'm a nihilist i can't come up with a reason to get up tomorrow and blah 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 and it's like if you don't think that you can do anything and you don't believe in yourself that's what you get you get yeah. nihilism. And if so you like feel useless if you have no purpose. And guess what? Like everyone has that fleeting thought. Like I'd mm -hmm. rather not get up and go to the gym. I'd rather not like Ooh. get after it today. Like every, like I kind of feel like to those people, like suck it up, dude. You're not that special just because you have depressive thoughts. We all do like mm -hmm. get over it. Like Did your, your goals and the people that you care about and what you want to make with your life should be bigger than, a a passing i don't know i'm very anti like don't be depressed like just choose not to like just just don't there, don't have time to be depressed i got there, too much shit to do i think that there is value in the perspective of if you are busy doing stuff you don't think about being depressed right like if you're kind of just sitting around and you're not actively doing something whether it be and whatever it is not it doesn't have to be like i know there are bookish people some people that study and, and read and stuff that that can be fulfilling and, and give you meaning in your life completely but if you're not actively doing something pursuing something if you're not after something then you're kind of like what's the point you know and so right, I, then I, you're just getting up eating things buying things and falling yeah, asleep yeah and and it, it, it there's not a whole lot of meaning in that and so that's so that was the first kind of like me sniffing around that there was something in the culture that i felt was wrong and then or something that was bad and i could i felt like it was manifesting in like just like a, a kind of a nihilism you know you and said that 2006? was six that was 2006 when the follow is at the yeah. same time like uh as smartphones are coming out like i remember i had a flip phone to my first cell phone was a flip phone i got it 2004 i really mm -hmm. didn't want one but so the in like 2000 college four and five was the sidekick era that or at least for me like two th early 2000 i had a sidekick and that was when you first had like kind of having the internet in your pocket right that was the very like t-mobile sidekicks were the first ones that could do it and so I was like cutting edge guy because I was, you know, we were on tour and I was in a van. And so with having the internet in mobile internet, um, I was really into it and the sidekick was handy and, and stuff. So that was the, that was the first time that there was like, a uh, the internet in your pocket, but like the, the person that sent the chat in 2006, that record came out at the end of 2007 is when the first iPhone came out. Wow. And then 2000, you know, 2012, was kind of when it reached critical masses, if I understand correctly. Like 2012, most everybody had the internet in their pocket. And that was, and then I just saw it today and I retweeted it. Let me see if I can find it. And then 2013, someone at a, maybe it was a game convention. Let me see if I can find the tweet. Oh, I hope I retweeted it. Here we go. Um, in 2013, someone named Adria Richards tweeted not cool jokes about forking repos in a sexual way and big dongles right behind me at hashtag PyCon. now i don't know the i don't remember the context specifically of this but i do remember someone being like oh someone made a joke and she overheard it and i was like she overheard someone make a joke but they didn't make a joke to her Right. That she just yep. overheard them talking amongst themselves. And then she took a picture of them. And that was kind of one of the first times that like it became like 
you 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 have a you know you say this you say something wrong and someone overhears it and we can try and cancel you and then after hall her, monitors yeah, yeah and then after her was that chick that flew and, yes yes and the one that by the tweeted, time she landed, got on a her life was so over great. she tweeted something about africa or something and then that poor woman. got on a got on a 10-hour flight and then when she landed she was fired she was canceled <laughs> yo welcome so to funny. the 21st century your life is done <laughs> that is like a it's pretty brutal but that was a hilarious story poor woman Poor woman. And it was a bad joke. And it was a bad joke. And she thought, you know, and the thing is, she thought that it was just going to her friends. And I myself has have experienced that stuff. I've said stuff when when on Facebook and stuff, because that was where it was. But in like 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, it was kind of weird because you weren't thinking that the people on your friends list Justine weren't your Sacco. friends. That was it. Justine Sacco. Yes, that was it. Justine Sacco. You weren't thinking that the people on your friends list weren't your friends. You didn't think that the people on your friends list might attack you because you thought they were your friends. But then <laughs> next thing you know, oh, people, This it, it was it was when it stopped being just your group of friends, it goes into being uh the public square <laughs> going uh -huh. to africa hope i don't get aids kidding. <laughs> i'm white oh. this still holds up today this you know what <laughs> i should tweet this out right now i think this is funny still oh well, I, the thing is i think you'd get away with it because of the context Just yeah everyone like, would know she did it. joke yeah. uh wow well, yeah. 2013 she's 30 years old senior director of corporate communications at iac oh i interviewed interviewed for when her when what month what was that this was 2013. He was she was visiting holidays, family for the holidays. So it had to have been like November, December, December 20th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that this one, this one at, at PyCon was a couple months earlier, but it was like, you know, oh. 2012 is the is critical mass where everyone's got the cell phone. And basically <laughs> that's when everyone became cyborgs, because even though you don't have it built into you, that's when it was constantly even, you know, it was constantly there, constantly poking you. You were constantly connected, you know, oh, so it was weird. Funny, it was a weird time, man. Yeah. The beginning of the canceling. OK, so that's when you started to notice it. Well, I noticed that I noticed it was coming before, like. In, like I said, 2006, I was like, something is changing in the culture here in the mm. U.S. And then for, you know, then by 2012, I was like, whoa. And, you know, I was I was I had a very dirty mouth and would make very dirty remarks. And and I've had a lot of people really upset at me and some stuff that I've said in the past. I used to drink too much, too. So I, I was not like I'm an alcoholic. I don't drink anymore. But um, I would get hammered and get into it on the Internet and just. Yeah, what you're describing sounds like you were being fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, if if it was if it was hanging out in in like a room with people, it'd be it would be considered making jokes and being fun. Um, being a good internet. hang, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You can't be a good hang on the internet. I learned that the hard way. Matthew Hammond says Phil was one of the best Tim cast IRL shows with Alex Jones. What was that like? <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you were on that episode. Yeah, I was. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, Alex is super nice. I know there's there's a lot of people that have very, very strong feelings about Alex. I know people there's a lot of people that really don't like him. He's been super nice to me. Um, he's funny. He's not what people think he is. Definitely. Um because people think that he's Nick Fuentes and Nick Fuentes is Nick Fuentes. Um, so, you know, he's, but he's cool, but he was super cool to hang out with. I was really kind of just there to wind him up. Like I was kind of just off in the corner yelling, like it's, <laughs> he'd say something. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, get out. This is why I'm here. You know, getting all excited, just kind of egging him on. Um, so, but it was tons of fun. It was wicked cool. Okay, cool. Do anything um he said that episode that stuck with you or anything new that you learned about him? I not really in particular. He was he was just I mean there was stuff that he said that I didn't know, but there was it, it, it and we kept googling because the joke was, you know, Alex Jones is always right and and he would say some crazy stuff and he was like, "Oh, hold on, hold on." And Tim would have, you know, Yep. Liz was there and she'd Google it up and she'd be like, no, actually. Yeah. And we're all just like, Jesus, Alex is never wrong. You know, and mm -hmm. having fun, hamming it up. Yeah. But it was but hype, yeah. man. 
yeah, yeah. totally. So it was, it was, it was fun and it was, it was a good time. Uh, from Matthew Hammond again, I find it weird that so many people think that fascism is right wing. When did an authoritarian oligarch become right wing? Hmm. When the communists got to write the narrative. I think Occupy Wall Street was when everything started to spin a little bit. They were like, oh, shit. Like, these guys are on to something. This is really more of a class war. Let's make this about racism. Let's rebrand this into BLM. There's a, there's a couple things. So do you, you know who James Lindsay is, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm real tapped into that guy's stuff. And I think that dude has like his finger is right on the pulse of. He's of, very smart. Yeah, I think he's coming on later in the week. That's I want I know like he's I feel so bad for the guy because he's already so busy. And and he was the guy really he was the first guy that kind of was like, you know, I am a kind of scholarly dude and I have written papers and I can understand stuff. Why don't I just go and read all the philosophy that these people that I'm, that are doing these things, why don't I just read the philosophy? And he sits down and he, he reads a ton of it and he, he, all of the stuff is on his new discourses podcast. So if you're oh. interested in that kind of stuff, you can follow him on his YouTube page. And he, he literally takes the actual, uh, you know, essays or books and he reads them through with the listener that's the podcast wow. so you don't have it. to that's great yeah and and he's you know he's talking about it and and so you can literally you understand it and you understand it mo better than most of the people that are quote unquote on the left yeah or, he's like know, a because, teacher mm -hmm. yeah so he's great i i think that he's he's the guy that's that's you know really got his finger on the pulse and i can't i can't recommend strongly enough for people to listen to his stuff so anyway and i got lost about where i was going so Oh, right. When did the authoritarian <clears throat> oligarch become right wing? Oh, you know? I, you know, um, I don't know for sure, but there there's, I, the thing is like, if you think of traditional left and right, then it comes from the French revolution and it's the people that wanted to completely tear down the existing structures were on the left and the people that wanted to keep the structures were on the right. So that's the left and right. It's like, are you kind of traditional or not traditional? Then when it comes to authoritarianism and liberty, that is kind of associated with left and right, but it's not really associated with left and right. It really is its own dynamic. It's really an authoritarian versus libertarian dynamic. So I think that the left and the right will prefer authoritarianism or libertarianism depending on where they are when it comes to holding government power. You know, I think that the, the, the right can be authoritarian when they're in government, in power. I think the left can be authoritarian when they're in power and, and they, each side appeals to the liberal principles when they're not in power. So the, the, the right has been, you know, we want to make sure that we have, you know, free speech and our, our, you know, our opinions have been suppressed, et cetera, et cetera, in the past 10, 15 or so years. But there was a time where people on the left had their actual opinions kind of suppressed by, by the right, because the right was culturally dominant and, and stuff. And that's not the case now, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been the case in the past. So, you know, it really, the dynamic you're talking about really is more authoritarian versus libertarian. Um, more than right or left wing so that's my Good thoughts answer. on that young pei Chang, i love that moment when alex and phil were on tim's and phil was supposed to rein alex in but instead <laughs> instead he yelled yes yes at the top of his tim literally did say he like when i that went was down your he was like, job you he were was like, handler <laughs> he was like you can help me rein alex and i'm like no problem i got this dog <laughs> Oh my god! If anyone like, can find the moment, which I didn't. Uh, what moment this is? I talked to him. I talked to him about that beforehand, so Tim didn't like. I didn't say that on camera, but yes, like Tim was like, <laughs> "Phil's gonna help me, you know, help me rein him in and keep him." I was like, "Oh yeah, no sweat, dude." And I was like, "No." <laughs> and then you didn't do it at all. <laughs> no, it literally, as soon as he started saying something crazy, I'm like, "Yes, yes, <laughs> this is why I'm here." <laughs> Oh my God. So much fun. So I got to rewatch that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Dave Phillips, why do most people in the arts have to be liberals? It's getting very annoying. I agree. This is very much true. Always when I was in it, 
even when I started in improv all throughout comedy, but now I'm in a kind of weird, you know, outcast the area. Dirty the, comedy, internet. But the, the dirty comedy, but the dirty comedy now is, is, is right. There was a time where the dirty comedy was left, you know, which was George Carlin. Like exactly. Very left, but he was just whoever's speaking truth at the time. I feel like mm -hmm. is, is, uh, who's thriving. At least in the comedy space. Absolutely. From you know, Will, I, mean, I remember when people went after Phil when he made fun of Black Veil bride singer Andy Beersack. The thing is, they didn't even go after me because I made a dickheaded. I was a dumb dickheaded remark, right? Like because there, when they first came out, their their like look was it was like they were all trying to be Nikki Six, right? They all like the whole band was dressed up like Nikki Six mm -hmm. from the. Uh, What's the record? The the first record that they put out. Um, anyways, Motley Crue, either early Motley Crue, but they were all and it wasn't like there was any variety. And I was like, you know, and then, you know, Andy was the guy, the front man. And so I made a, a crappy remark and I used the F slur and it was rude and bad. But people came after me, not because I made a crappy remark about Andy, but because I used the F slur and they said, oh, that must mean that you are a bigot. And it's like, no, that's not mm. what it means at all. Because I mean, you know, again, it's a product of my age, probably. But like when, yeah, you were, a lot of people you... say it casually. Like <clears throat> in combat media, it's probably said a hundred times a day, and it's hilarious. So yeah. like, it's just how you grow up, who your friends are. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It seems to be more of like a kind of blue. Like I don't know. I, I feel like I hang out with more like dudes and blue collar types, and it's like we're saying it all the time. <laughs> <It's> funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It's it's the it's it's you know. I, I just like I said, they, like I get that there are people that get offended and stuff, but like the association where it's like you must hate, we must have this association with hate as opposed to being like, well, you shouldn't say that word because it might offend people. It's, oh, you must be a bigot and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, you know, it's like I grew up in extremely liberal Massachusetts. Like I... Wow. Like going, like playing shows. I played shows like when I was a kid, we'd play in, in like Northampton, which I don't know if you know anything about Northampton, Massachusetts, but they're like Smith College is there. Oh, and wow. there's a, it's very, very, very progressive. And like, there was never a problem with like me going to hang out at like drag shows. Like I've been to drag shows and, and I've been to gay bars. It's like, that You've was- been to Provincetown? I went there. I, I, well, I've been to Provincetown, like driving through, but not mm -hmm. like to hang out to, to go to bars or anything like that. Um, but I've definitely been to gay bars in, you know, in Northampton more yeah. than once. Massachusetts is very liberal. I think more so than New York. I, I maybe, but I mean, I moved out of Massachusetts over over like taxes and gun laws, be, like not because of the okay, right. It was because of the taxes, <laughs> and sense. also massachusetts is extremely close i live in the most southwest town in new hampshire like right over the border so but anyways yeah so that's where that came from um and i like i didn't mean to go i wasn't trying to go after him it's just it was it was a dumb drunken comment um mm -hmm. and, you know but when, it, and when, people made it about the word that i said not the fact right. that i made a dumb drunken comment when people yeah. take it upon themselves to be offended for not only words that are not meant in a, a derogatory way, for, even if you're just saying it casually in conversation, that's a huge problem. And if you're getting offended for somebody else, it's like, uh, I mean, I need we, we need to stop that. It's it's such a waste of everyone's time. You have to explain, oh, I wasn't calling you. Like, come on, man. I call everything gay. And I just, <laughs> this makes me want to say the words more to like almost like what we've done with the word fascism. Like you say it so much, it loses all meaning. It stops meaning anything. Yeah. And, and I mean, there's, there's been, there's, there's definitely been times where I'm, I've been on the same spot where it's like, when someone says you can't do that, I'm like, check this shit out. <laughs> you know, I'm like, Oh, can't I, but let me it. show you what I can and cannot do. So. Yeah. From Dustman Naraj. The pie con situation and people's reaction to it was what woke me up to how pervasive leftist indoctrination had become. I the don't know anything about pie con. That was the that was the the first the woman that uh I'm gonna just tweet, I'm gonna tag you in this right now. Woman who flew to Africa? No, that was no, this is the woman that uh uh just check your uh, your mentions because you're tagged in the tweet. 
Wait a second. I was just sent to the exact moment where you were supposed to wrangle in Alex and then didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bring this up. <laughs> and then didn't. <laughs> and then didn't. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Wow, this was when was this? Last year? Yeah. It's funny. The 21st century. So to for her to back out just doesn't make any sense for her brand or for, you know, a view she gets on all her videos. And, you know, perhaps she's, I, I don't want to, I don't want to call her a liar or anything when she says she doesn't think she'd have much to add and she feel like she wouldn't be participating enough. I mean, I, I think it's a fair point. He says he wants to tax the rich and I'm like, that's not far right, Steve. <laughs> yeah, Steve. I don't think any of the labels, I mean, we need populism, we need Americanism and that's classical liberalism. The left is not liberalism. People study it. It goes back to the Jacobins and the French Revolution. And George Washington said, that is not who we are. That's the enemy. They were going to have nine-day work weeks, abolish the family, oh, wow. and everybody's slaves. It was getting rid of the church and the oligarchy and, and the royalty and creating a total system of control. So the left literally comes out of a super insane uh, cult, which was the real Illuminati, Adam Weishaupt. This is in mainline history books. And, and they set up the French Revolution and were going to set themselves up as God. So they would have all the science. Everybody else would be like animal slaves. <laughs> and out of that came communism. Did it seem See, like I don't the, know about I don't know about any of that. Did it seem like the French Revolution got infiltrated? Well, let me I just want oh, to, yeah. I, I oh, want to, yeah. I want to address that. They, they tried point. to kill Thomas Jefferson. Well, he me, was he was the leader of the Illuminati at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he had, to, he had to get out. Yes. Yes. No, did you know this is well, this is well known. George Washington. This is what I'm here for. George Washington wrote 16 letters to pull him up. Oh George my Washington God. wrote 16 letters. You're like you've been reborn. <laughs> it was so much fun. You were like jumping out of your skin. You're like, this is so exciting. <laughs> I, and I'm just like, I can add him on. Up. Yeah. It, when you've been looking into, and I'm just like a baby conspiracy theorist. Like I only really became whatever red pilled, free thinking, looking into stuff in 2020. And sure, someone sure. like Alex has been spending decades reading into this. Yep. And even when you hear a little bit of some truth come out and you hear somebody else say that you go, Oh my God, we can talk about this. This is so exciting. So mm -hmm. that's a great yep. feeling. It, and, and you know, like libertarians obviously are are very skeptical of the government and i think that the government has earned it um i don't think that it's i i don't think that there's anything wrong with assuming that the government is interested in retaining its own power and also is interested in making sure that its reputation is as clean as it can possibly keep it so it's it has a significant incentive to lie through its teeth and kill people that would expose it and blah 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 so uh, <clears throat> yeah a lot of a lot of people's one of their favorite moments uh from the reptilian research <laughs> it's the communist strategy to label any opposition as fascist racist or nazi yeah, yep that's true Manish Mims as an old school metalhead. What year did metalheads become pussies? Someone in the chat said they think it might have been Nirvana was the start of rockers becoming pussies. But I don't know what you think. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, people can say that, but like Pantera was there the whole of the 90s. Like people can say that like metal, you know, did it's it's true to say that things are waves that they ebb and flow and the popularity of metal has ebbed and flowed um but it's never gone away and and it's never fully become you know pussies or whatever because like i said throughout all of the 90s pantera was right there just kicking everyone's fucking balls you know they were just <laughs> awesome being badass metal as hell you know and and so I don't know that it ever did. It's just a matter of how how kind of society goes. And there's always going to be peop, creatives that are creating things in response to the way that society's going. Is my big brain reply? Okay, text floor. I think thanks. Yes, let this get <laughs> the new record. So good. Oh wow, God! I should uh, I should introduce you to Don Jameson. I he, would uh, like to meet Don. He used to do that metal show with Jim Florence. Oh, okay, yes. I've <laughs> I've given I've talked some smack about uh, one of the guys that does the that metal show. <laughs> Which one? Well, just the I actually more about the that metal show overall because like when it first came out, I was like these guys were only kind of talking about like 
bands from like the late 80s and early mm -hmm. 90s. I was like, this is that nostalgia show. This is not that metal show. They should oh. be talking about they should be talking about like because I'm there's probably Maybe a little they're a little me. older and those are the bands that they really liked. Yeah, I don't know. Probably that's probably and I was like, it was probably a little me being me being like in a modern metal band, being like, why aren't you putting modern metal bands on this? You know, okay. They really didn't have any smaller bands really at the time when and this is when you know this is, it was back when they were doing it. So I'm sure that things are have changed. I don't want to sound like I'm dogging them like just no, a definitely dog not. Them. Um, but that's that was how I felt. I was like, man, these are all like just talking about like your your back when you were like you know playing football in high school like put on some yeah. actual metal bands from today you know so that would be a good conversation to have yeah and Eddie Trunk was the third guy on that that's show. the guy that was just okay. getting into it I've with, never uh, met him I'm, I'm he was just get getting into it with with Ronnie Ronnie from uh, Falling in Reverse about uh, about tracks live and and pre recorded stuff and using a uh, a a computer live and. Um, he just sounded very boomery because it just, I mean, anytime, anytime you're talking about new, mo anytime you're an older person talking about technology and saying that it's bad, you cannot help but come off as like old man yells at the sky. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, you automatically come off like that, you know? So you know, it's whatever you have it, to, it is. You have to is. get with it. You have to like, uh, evolve. Uh, Dustman, when I am weaker than you, I ask for freedom because that is according to your principles. When I am stronger than you, I take away your freedom because that is according to my principles. Yes. That is a quote from something, but I have, I am familiar with it. Thanks. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if it's Machiavelli. I don't know. It's very Machiavellian anyways. Yeah. Um, okay. That's neat. I, so you were Rand Paul. I'm getting back to your libertarian oh, yes. kind of path here. And then you were Joe Jorgensen supporter in 2020. Mm -hmm. I remember I tried to get her on the podcast. Um, what, and I've read that you are a little bit critical of her or I, a lot of people think that she, she earned really it. didn't really didn't do enough. Like I know, I also read that she had like a total full-time job at the same time that she was running. And I'm like, how could you focus? I mean, I know people need money, but yeah, I, the, the libertarian party is exhausting. Um, they're, <laughs> they're really good now. They have recently, they've really, really made a lot of changes and the right people have influence in the party now. And I expect good, really, really good things on a ground level so small uh like local level wins i expect those kind of things michael heiss is the guy that's running the Mises, Mises caucus and the guy is smart he is really 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 smart he's got his s together um and he's got a strategy that is that is a winning strategy um so just it's just a matter of, of selling it on a national level. I don't know what the the Libertarian Party can do because the DNC, you know, and the FBI are basically the same thing nowadays. So it's really mm -hmm. tough. Um, the Republicans can barely remain a a national uh, level party. They're they're almost regional, a regional party as it is, um, you know, Florida and the South kind of is the stronghold and they're going to lose most other places. They're, they're losing, they're even losing out West, like boy, Idaho and, and really, uh, well, because there's a lot of people in California that are moving up to Butte and moving up to, you know, it's like they'll, the, the Arizona too. Yeah. You know, so there's, there's, a, there's, it's, it's strong possibility that the South is going to be a Republican stronghold um, politically. So the, the libertarian party doesn't have, real chances of actually winning um but they can really influence now it would be great to see you know it would i would love to see if dave does actually decide to run dave smith if he runs i would love to see dave on the debates oh god i would kill yeah, to he see would dave crush. on the debates. he's he so would. smart he's he such is. a good speaker he's, he's so, so smart he knows and he knows liberty he's super principled he knows libertarian uh ideas so great i mean like there's so many really, really, really compelling, smart people that are, if they're not in the Libertarian Party, they're adjacent to and friendly with, like, I think Michael Malice is another super smart guy that even if he weren't, you know, even if he wouldn't, you know, or even if he, because he isn't officially in the Libertarian Party or anything like that, um, his his anarchist and, and you know, his anarchist views make him obviously a, a great fit with with Dave and, and his, his perspective. So having those kind of people have influence in the conversation would be phenomenal in my opinion. I would love it, you know? So that's, you know, that's my, my 
libertarian kind of spiel but I, you know yeah, i love I them still, both i yeah. the people i love i'm not I, I don't like i avoid aligning myself too closely with any political party uh, just in general um yeah. but i am very friendly to the mises guys and and to their ideas i love madge Torre. i love uh i love the work that yeah. he's done He's you been know. on the show. He's great too. He's great. He's it's great. like libertarians would do well to just infest culture. I think as much as they possibly can, because it's yeah. a lot of young guys and girls that are technologically savvy and they care about social media. Whereas I feel like a lot of Republicans are, right, yeah, there are some like cool younger Republicans, but like as a party, it's a bit crusty. And I feel like libertarians would just, they can do the most good by just infecting libertarian ideas like you're, all over social media and you're right. Online. And, and people like you guys, like you and the, the people at, at compound media, or whether you're talking about the people you do Simcast with, or people like, uh, you know, like Carl and the work that he's doing, the culture stuff is really, is really, I think it's, it's far more inviting than turning points, culture stuff. Not that there's mm -hmm. anything wrong with turning points. It's just that it's turning points is very conservative. It's very and buttoned I, up. It yeah. is. And you have you have to be the whole package. I feel like you have to have the look. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you probably have to be kind of religious. You've got to yeah. be like live, like live, eat, breathe conservatism, which like uh, you know, a lot of people would be out, you know. <laughs> I'm a out of that. I'm a deviant, right? Like I'm <laughs> I I feel very comfortable thinking about hanging out with like again, like you or like the guys at, at the, the skanks, the, those mm -hmm. guys are very much like, those are people that I can be around and I can feel very comfortable around. I don't know that I feel super comfortable around a lot of the, uh, a lot of the people at turning points, although some of the women I would like to get comfortable with. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of hot women for so sure many, involved. There's so many hot girls. It's like that turning, turning point. They're all like uh, turning point, turning point Barbie. They should actually yeah. make dolls. And they're all begging to get pregnant too, which is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> they're because they're all conservative. They're like, they're like make me a mama. So I, say, I don't want to work. Yeah, don't... come here. Make me a <laughs> mama. Put a baby brand, in me. Their old brand is like one big billboard. Like someone knock me up, dude. That's so <laughs> funny. They're like, how many? How much louder can I say this? I don't yeah. want to go to work. <laughs> like you want to watch me pull so this shit and cheat again? We're like, the best. I'm only at this conference to fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm been doing my makeup every morning. Oh my god, they're, that, they're fun though. But, but I think yeah. they're great. They're best served. I really think like going to colleges. You know what I mean? Like just being. That's where I don't know. Obviously, college kids are <sighs> dabble in all sorts of fun stuff. But I think um, it's no nice to have in, something anything pushing back against. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's having a wild phase in college. I, I don't know. I, I think uh, they are a force of good. It's just, it's hard to get. Yes. It's hard to be part of that when it feels like there's so many rules. I and... want them to, to be around. I want them to succeed and I want them to be influential. I would never be accepted by them. Totally. Yeah, same. They might mm -hmm. like me because I'm there are things that we agree on when it comes to small government and like they'd be like, yeah, you're cool. You're you're OK. But none of them would want me dating their daughter. But you know what? Like everyone has their place. <laughs> like those guys yeah. can learn the history. They can learn policy. And then like people like me and you, not to like sound like we're so fucking important, but like we are kind of like the culture shapers. Like we should be like what, you know, picking up some of the slack and what the um, the left has ran with over the past, like past few decades. We, we should be picking up the slack. I like I like to put the onus on us. Be like, look, get out there and yeah. do some work. Create stuff. Dickhead. Create stuff. Do what? Look at Bryson Gray. Every time there's he's a new great. scandal, he's got a new song out. Jesus so, and it's, Christ. It's, it's not, even though he is very conservative and religious, it's, but it's, I don't, it's not the job of the artist to uphold the like the moral yeah. uh initiatives i think of whatever party you're a part of it's like no it's like you shape culture with art so and, focus and on bryson making is more. bryson is challenging the the accepted morality he's he's doing things that in a cool way like yeah. he's basically like yeah don't be a slut and here's why <laughs> yeah i mean yeah I, like uh there's this girl that uh, i forget her name but she's a right winger and she she had this picture of herself this just this little meme i'll, I'll send it to you but she isabel o'reilly she's another oh, one that yeah, reminds me of britney venti like she just spits fire just 
And she also she, was like, yeah, probably like like has bimbo energy in the yeah. best way. Yeah, bimbo energy. I love it. I love bimbo energy too. She just like, and there was this one meme she had. She just got this like this flat bill hat on, kind of ticked off to the side, and she's like this, and it just says, "Control your own body, ho." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pro choice, and I'm like, that's funny. So yeah, anyways. a lot of these leftist women, they make it sound like they're being free. It's like, stop it. Like, yes. come on. Like how many decisions got you up to the point where you're pregnant and you're going to blame men for controlling your body? Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And I keep screaming like we can only get pregnant four to six days out of the month. Like, let get off birth <laughs> control. Learn your cycle. Stop being an idiot. Like the least you can do is learn your own meat suit that you're walking around <laughs> in every day. Right. That's yours. Lazy, you only got one. I'm like, oh, my pill didn't work. And now I'm pregnant. It's like, <sighs> but they don't teach you that. It's like, that's, that's what moms have to teach their daughters or friends have to teach their other girlfriends. It's just not really like promoted in the culture. It's like mm, plan B, be a dumb slut. Like, don't be, <laughs> don't be picky. I mean, I think, look, I, I endorse both your strategy and birth control. So you okay. should know your own body and just in case you can take the pill. And or just learn how to pull out. Or you can, you can make him wear a condom or, you know, you can Right. But once you get to know, once you know, like, I really like this person, like, just pull out. I, I you know. I tell you what, once, <laughs> um, once, once you're at like, once you're like, I don't cheat because I don't want to have to like worry about like the new partner thing. Cause okay. the best thing in the world is monogamous sex. Oh, it's so awesome it's to so be like, fun. I know it's so, yeah. And you, and like, you know, the things that makes the other person's toes curl and you're helping each other out and you're having fun. Like it's the best. I like, you help each I'm other move. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, I can hold your leg up there for you. I know what you like. You know, like I mean, that that to me, I'm like, I'm not super into uh, like prom prom promiscuity. Promiscuity. I'm not like the dude that wants to go and like I'm a serial monogamist. Like I want to be with in a serious relationship and stuff because that's when everything's the most fun and cool. Like the whole yeah. like it's fun to learn new people, but you know, learning new people, then you find out stuff you don't like, and then you got to find start learning on someone new. I'd rather be like I like it when you you know you got things kind of squared away so. especially as it's ultimately better for women and even like this random chat like i like orgies it's like when you're young when you're in your 20s like i get it that is the cool thing to say but as a woman like orgies are exhausting and you're probably not gonna have a great time like you're gonna be like oh i'm literally customer service you know what i mean like and women we have the tendency to people please so when you get into a situation like that it's like this is not gonna be the best time for you the guys are gonna have a blast they're gonna be like man i'm thirsty like i'm working hard over here it's just it's not they're not all they're cracked up to be uh, no comment where was i um, talking about orgies elon musk <laughs> <laughs> and orgies he had recently tweeted out should he stay on as a uh, head oh. of twitter well he'll always be i mean he's the owner but should he step yeah. down as ceo he's like i will do whatever this poll says this was a couple of days ago everyone's like no but the poll came out uh, that he should step down. So this is concerning. Do you think he will? Do you think this is part of a greater plan? Do you think he already knows what his next step is? And, he, and these polls just are sort of taking the temperature. He had always wanted to get another CEO. So people are kind of forgetting that, like, the reason that initially he had Prague stay was because he was hoping – or what he said was he wanted things to work. You know, he wanted to keep people around and blah, blah, blah. And then it seems like as he started to learn more and more about what was going on, he saw the the problems and, you know, the stuff that the Twitter files has uncovered and finding out that the finding out today that the FBI was paying Twitter mm -hmm. for their time. So literally the FBI is paying Twitter to censor people. Right. Twitter made almost three and a half million dollars in less than two years. Yeah. So from our government. Yeah. That so, is Ray. So yes. Um, so I don't think that it matters that he be the CEO, just so long as he's the owner and he is still in control of it. And I believe that the I believe that 
Twitter is a piece of a larger plan that Elon Musk has. And I think that plan is literally to, if not himself, leave Earth to pave the way for humans to leave Earth indefinitely. First stop Mars. And then I think that I think the plan is to be able to create spaceships that are capable of interstellar travel because he said himself that, look, I know that these are big things, but on a long enough time frame, climate change doesn't matter because the sun will turn into a red giant and engulf the earth. So if humanity is going to last past that point, we mm. must be able to escape the solar system. We have to be able to wow. be able to travel. We have to be able to live in interstellar space because we have to be able to procreate, make more of us and do that all without a planet to get us to another planet. So, and I think that that's the, I think that's the goal. The, the, the goal with crazy. Like most people have, Oh, what's your five year plan? What's your 10 year plan? <laughs> Elon has a 5 billion year plan. <laughs> yeah, he literally does. And, and so I think that the, I think Twitter is the, the platform most likely to be functional interplanetary or interplanetarily because they're short messages, right? You put your tweet out, goes out it's a three minute trip at the speed of light from mars to earth and that's when we're on we're we're both on the same side of the sun and i don't know if there are you know i don't know what the longest time between the two is like the but you know i saw this little um info i don't know a little a little gift thing but it, it showed the speed of light and it's like on short scales the speed of light's almost instantaneous obviously but then when you think about how long it takes to get from the earth to the moon it's it's like three seconds to get from light to get to the for, to the moon or something like that like it it's like there's an amount of time like it takes eight minutes for light to get from the sun to us that's eight minutes ago so it's like to be able to communicate with mars you're gonna need to be have the messages small and i think that it fits in with his plan of being able to get out to get human beings off of earth. I think that's the whole goal. And that's what, that's what, that's why batteries are a thing because there's not going to be uh, fossil fuels on other planets. So he's going to want to be able to make batteries and, and mm -hmm. fuel the, the vehicles that are going to be on other planets. You know, it's, it's, it's all got a certain synchronicity. So. Wow. And you know who's going to be alive during this time to move to maybe a Jupiter or a Saturn? Nick Cannon's kids. You know, <laughs> they're going to forward the human race. <laughs> and Elon, of course. <laughs> so we're thinking we're going to, Elon's like, let's move human beings to Jupiter or Saturn. But Saturn's, isn't it Saturn all gas? Or well, that's no, Uranus? He, like, it's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, they both are. Uh, but he's talking about like interstellar, not just interplanetary. He's okay. talking about getting out, finding a whole nother star system. So a planet with a different sun. And so then it has finally, to be... the flat earthers will be silenced. Yeah, and shut them <laughs> bitches up. <laughs> Stupid flat earthers. Oh, no, they're fun. I'm just kidding. They are. I like I love flat earthers. Them. I love them. They are fun. They are fun. I especially like it when they explain it with the with the with the revolving suns yes. on top and the <laughs> It's it's an it's like an elaborate. It reminds me of like like an elaborate uh like when you drop the ball and it rolls down a thing and it hits a thing and knocks the thing over. That's what their their ex explanation of how the, oh, the like universe a works. Goldberg? Yeah, and that's what it makes me think of. It's got to be right here, and the sun goes this way, and the moon goes over here, and the ice wall over that thing. And mm. ask any pilot; they know what's up. Yeah, they know right. the flight path because <laughs> they can never fly across in, uh, Antarctica. Anyone ever. <laughs> Clorox Jello shots got to see ATR twice with Oli was the best both time. This podcast has been as fun as I figured it would be. Thank you both for what you do. Thanks, Aww. Clorox. Thank you. Ollie's our uh, guitar player who passed away in 2018, 17. Jesus oh, fucking no. Christ. To 18. Yeah. He uh, passed away in 2018. So did you replace him? Uh yes. Yeah, there's a there's a gentleman by the name of Jason Richardson that plays uh, lead guitar in the band now, and he uh, he is the guy that Ollie would have wanted to replace him. So why why do you, what makes you say that? Uh, when we we did a tour in probably 2011 or something like that with a band called Born of Osiris, and Jason Richardson was in that band, and Ollie used to go and watch them, 
every chance he got, which is a lot of the time. And he would come back and he would be like, you guys have got to check this kid out. This kid is the best guitarist I've ever seen. I've been playing 20 whatever years. I will never be as good as this kid. And Richardson is that good. And Ollie was a huge fan. And so they became buddies and, and it's, it makes me, makes me happy that, that Richardson is in the band because Ollie would have wanted it. Yeah. And he, he knew who he was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's almost yeah. like they were friends. Yeah. Yep. That's really cool. How much of, how much do you think is a uh, inherent, like an inherent genius or a predisposition to being good at something versus like hard work and practice? There are, there is an amount of talent that comes with stuff to be sure. Like there are some, I have worked with professional musicians who have an absolutely atrocious sense of rhythm where they like they can't follow a metronome like or if they don't have a, a very simple beat they fall off or, or whatever um so that and that isn't that's hard to teach that's something that that's kind of an internal clock that you have is is when you can kind of feel the rhythm uh, uh, of a tempo um but when it comes to actual playing if you practice the right things in the right way most people can get really good at most instruments. Like your average person, if they want to, if they apply themselves, they can get very good at most, at, at most instruments. So there is now when that doesn't mean they're ever going to write a song that anyone gives a crap about though, because being able to play guitar is not the same thing as being able to write a song or write music that people that moves people. There's a lot of people that write amazing music that is awesome that nobody will ever hear because they're mm -hmm. like, they just don't like it, people just, it doesn't, doesn't hit with the right people and never gets off the ground, you know, um, there, and then there are some bands that have written amazing songs, like absolutely amazing songs. And they just don't hit for some reason. And like everybody that hears the songs like, man, I love that song. That's great. But then, like, for some reason, it just doesn't stick with them, you know? So that's that, that you know, that that uh, intangible thing that artists wish that they could, you know, wish they could nail. Like, people, the reason, when you can write, you know, if you can write 10 hit songs, that's a career. Right? 10 big hit songs, that's a whole career. We, all it remains is, as like, we've got, like, probably two legit big hits and then one that's a really big cover right so and that's like most bands don't get three big hits not really big hits you know what i mean like you get if you get a song that gets five ten million views that's cool but that's not a big hit you know 30 40 50 75 100 million views or whatever stuff like that kind of stuff wow. that's a big that's a pretty big hit most bands don't get big hits like that you know so just because you can play doesn't mean you're going to be able to be an artist, you know, or, or be doesn't mean you're going to be able to, 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 to create music that people care about, but you will be able to be a musician because studio musicians and, and people that can play and perform pieces of music or other people's music, those people are in demand and they always have work. Like knowing how to play an, um, uh, a musical instrument well and knowing theory is like knowing a trade wow it's like being a plumber you know like always if you, have work yeah you can always have work as a musician if you learn theory and can play one instrument well if well enough to perform right like so so that way you can someone says okay we need someone to play guitar on our record can you you know call someone you come in and you can sit down and play guitar on the record and you get 500 bucks for the day you learn the stuff you play it through there you go you know um so you'll always have work it, it just it's like a, it's like a trade you can always have work if you know theory and, and can play an instrument so. does all that remains have a need for like an alto sax player that stopped <laughs> playing around high school like do you funny you mentioned that example. funny you mentioned that uh we do not currently but there is a dude that is currently uh very heavily uh relied upon in the music industry right name right now by by the name of saxel rose on instagram he's this saxel rose saxel rose he's a sax <laughs> player and he is 
great. He was out. We, we did a, we just did a tour in the springtime and, and this band called Miss May, Miss May I was out with us and uh, they, they had him come out for, for a song. We we're in Baltimore and he, uh, he's from the area and he came out and he's, he's so, he's super nice and he's great sax player and it was super cool to have him there live playing sax at this metal show you know and obviously you know he's a musician that knows what he's doing so you know he's playing stuff that you're it's kind of surprising because musically like style wise you're like oh that that's weird but at the same time you're like well it sounds great because he's a great player and he knows what he's doing you know so cool i wonder if i can play no i'll probably get struck if i play anything yeah. that's so neat but you should I, follow him on, Insta on Instagram, Saxel Rose. I will. Great. I stopped playing because I got annoyed having to like bring the sax back and forth like from home to school. I would like sit on it while I was waiting for the bus. I was like, this thing is clunky as hell. Why didn't I pick flute? Why couldn't I just be a hot girl flute player? Poor choice. No, That's why, Christy. Poor choice. I was like, no, I committed to this. I had to play the dumb clarinet for two years to even get to a p position where I could play the saxophone. Oh, really? Like there was a, you had to unlock one instrument before yes. you could lock, unlock another one? Yeah, I had to I had to ugh, embarrassingly play the clarinet for like I was two just, years. I was just thinking about how annoying it is in Call of Duty when you have to shoot one kind of gun so you can unlock another kind of gun. And that's the same kind of thing. You got to learn this instrument. Before yeah, you I'm playing the clarinet. I'm like, nobody, I hope nobody can see this. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to take the back. Yeah. <laughs> and then we would play our clarinets, me and my sister both, because we were both on that same clarinet to saxophone path. <laughs> we would play at the nursing home because um, I had a retarded great uncle Roy that we would. And that's why I can say the word retarded, because I am retarded on my mom's side. We would go and visit him at the at the Freeport nursing home. And I, I had a lot of exposure to crazy old people at a young age. Like we'd be passing out cookies and this one lady, I don't know what her problem was, but she just would grab onto the, the tray and like look me dead in the eye and not let go of the tray. And I was like, I think I'm done passing out cookies for old people. Uh, and then we learned that the same lady escaped the nursing home and had crazy like, I don't want to say a certain kind of strength, but apparently she picked up her wheelchair and threw it over her head and then like escaped, like ran across the street. They had to like See, throw a net over her. It was like, I was no. like she's my hero. Yeah, like, a I net? Like, I, wanted, I was like, I need to interview her. I'm sure she's long dead, but I, I'm just imagining the net. I don't know how they I, got As soon as I, like, I liked the, I was into it as soon as you were talking about like, <laughs> Our hard strength throwing like, the thing, like but a then tank the dart to the neck, like <laughs> yeah, right. Like it's like how do you get, like, It's like where's Scarlett Johansson to calm the Hulk down, you know? Yeah, it so, was fun. That's great. I recommend taking your kids to nursing homes. I like to <laughs> put them in situations where they're not having a good time. That's what's wrong with kids now these days. Too Here I fun. go. I'm turning into an old. Yes, they're not doing things. They're not doing enough things that aren't fun. So That's they don't right. appreciate a good time. <laughs> there was no like changing the radio station. There was no. Are you kidding me? Like my, <laughs> my fiance son, I have a playlist for him in my Spotify. When I was a kid, my mom's like she would literally say to me, no, you have to learn to listen to some bad songs sometime. Like this is sorry, you're listening to this bad radio station that you hate and it's gonna be for the whole car ride. And like that's what tough that's what makes you like learn about life. We will listen to we used to listen to bad music intentionally. <laughs> like we like there's there's bands that are out there that are famous among bands that I will not name the bands because just in case someone hears, but Thanks there are listening. bands out there that are famous among bands because they're terrible. And like their, you know, their demo gets passed around and stuff. There was, there was another band that, that again, I will, will remain nameless. They had a, 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 a collection of what they called 50 mile an hour records. They would uh, put the, they would collect demos from people that were like, Oh, will you check out my band and stuff? They would put them on the, on the CD player in the bus and then uh, if it was bad, they would they would add it to 50 mile an hour records and throw it out the window. And, uh, you know, th that kind of stuff. The, the, bad music is entertaining. Bad yeah. music is very entertaining. It's fun. I was there was this lady who went viral. God, I don't know. If she must be like Romanian or something. And she had this like rap. Someone has to find. I'm not giving enough information, but she's blonde. And I she's know like a, who you're talking about. Yeah, can, rapper, but I and, we couldn't stop watching her. I was like, oh my god! Like, she's wasn't she involved in a crypto scheme? <laughs> I don't know. She, I think something of hers went viral in the last couple of weeks. 
that's how she came across. But maybe I don't know. But I, I, I feel like there was I feel like there was it, not this dude, this SBX dude or SBR, whatever the dude's name is. SBF. SBF. S- Sam Bankman Bank Freed. Freed. Yeah, and what's him. going on? He's a fucking bajillionaire. He's stealing all of our money, but he still can't get a haircut. Like, wh- what's going on with this guy? You're so I, busy. You can't get a haircut. OK. I can't look. You can't have that much money and look like that. I don't know. You have That's to. You decision. have got to go to the gym. Yeah. You've yes. There's to. no excuse to be soft when you have that much money. No, because someone else can cook for you. Like someone else can make awesome yes. things that are healthy that you like that are prepared well, and you have they a can ribeye every fucking yeah. night, man. There's no excuse to be eating bread still at this no, point in your life. No excuse. You have to look decent. You can't like you. No matter what your your no matter what you your opinion on Andrew Tate. Yeah. No matter yeah. what your opinion on Andrew Tate, I he love looks him. like he should. I love Andrew look. Tate. Everyone really? needs to listen to Andrew Tate. Yes, <laughs> because you know what he teaches? Like when you zoom out on Andrew Tate, yes, you can find individual sound bites that will really piss you off about Andrew Tate and he'll offend people. But when you zoom out, I think his overall message is you should get rich, develop yourself, get rich on your own so that you can unplug from the matrix and, and be your own man. And I like that. I like I, that messaging. I, I like that he is against the establishment i think that that might be about all that i'm prepared to actually say that i like about him he entered he's entertaining and he's funny he makes me laugh mm-hmm. um you know so so cool um i thought there was a time where i thought that he actually had had that the the stuff the accusations against him uh were true but apparently they are not. He's he was not involved in any kind of oh, illicit. Okay. Try to meet him or something. Well, they, no, someone not me too. Like they, I think there was like he actually had to go to the police station and and stuff because there were accusations of of human trafficking stuff. But oh, was, that's bad. Yeah, but the thing is, he apparently, and as I understand it, the they were just allegations. Um, and the it was cleared up at the police, and the person that he alleged to have mistreated came out and said, no, 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 no. This is all blah, blah, blah. So it, it's, he's any, he, he, you know, they, there were no charges filed or whatever. So apparently it, he didn't. Um, but you know, again, I'm only going by what I okay. hear. And if he didn't, then, you know, more power to him, go do your thing, go out there. And, and, you know, I do think that he, it might be, he's making a lot of money off of kind of like, you know, underachieving dudes. Here. You know, mm-hmm. which kind of is a drag. But if um, he's helping people, exactly. He's, up, if he, he's uplifting and he's encouraging masculinity. If if one out of ten dudes that he that are paying him actually do get something out of it and make something of themselves, the other nine, it's like, look, you know, maybe they didn't. You know, maybe maybe things didn't work out for him, but maybe they didn't work out for themselves. There is the possibility that, like, look, it's hard to do the stuff that. Tate is saying you should do it's easy to pay the monthly fee though so maybe the you know it's like there could be a lot of dudes that are like oh i want to do it they pay the you know they join and then they don't do anything and then they get mad because it was hard and they didn't want to do it but they felt they spent the money so i mean again i i don't want to get too in depth on him you know i don't have anything particularly negative to say about him um i do think it was smart that like he kind of bust onto the scene in the u.s with the whole star wars post i've never seen star wars that was the one that that went viral. Oh. That, you remember that one keep your movie i'm a millionaire whatever wow and I was like, oh wow really like i was like that oh really dude <laughs> It was like yeah. every, everybody that watched Star Wars is a loser, you know. Which he did I mean, have a tweet that I had a problem. Well, he, that's the thing. He he likes to tweet things that people have a problem with. He said that yeah. like reading is stupid. Like I'm like, no, <laughs> yes. I don't think that's true. And like, and by the way, let's keep this in mind. And a couple years down the road, when you're selling a book, he's um, already got a book out. Yeah, so that's so silly. Yeah. Um, no, reading is great. I, I understand. I, I agree with part of that. Like you should not, if there's nothing but self-help books in your, in your bookshelf, that's very bad. Like you need yeah. to get some history. I, most of my books are about like conspiracy theories and I got some, you know, this whole like George or- Orwell, like truth about COVID, like that you're not going to figure that out on your own. Like th- yeah. there is a real benefit from learning from people who've specialized in certain areas. So I'm a, I mean, I'm a- I'm a big fan of philosophy personally. Like I'm not, I'm not educated. I didn't go to college. So this is all like my own reading and and listening to podcasts and stuff like that. So, but I think that that's, 
that's probably people college is overrated adulthood is your college like you have the you have your entire life to read and and become specialized and learn getting get right signing bad contracts is is when people think that four to six years of their life defines them and puts them in this elitist upper echelon like i don't give a fuck if you went to harvard or an ivy school like that just means like you had money or your parents had connections like a lot of people had good grades uh it's no some Mm -hmm. of the smartest people i know didn't finish college so uh the literally the best guitar player in the world that i know uh, did not finish high school and he has absolutely no regrets and there is no reason for him to worry about it that's good that's the best when you figure out what you're good at and what you are passionate about early in life that's really cool he's so good Uh, and stupid from matthew when are we going to get a crossover of phil and eric july in a song or album uh, I love Eric. We've talked about it. Uh, Eric is extremely busy with uh, the new Ripiverse, the release of the Ripiverse, and, and all the stuff that goes along with starting a comic. Um, so we've talked about it. There, I sent them a, a song um, to take a listen to. Uh, I have not heard anything, so I'm ex- I, I'm figuring that he's just uh, super super tied up. So yeah, maybe in the future we'll hope hope. He's uh, oh, every time I see him, he's sweaty or he's in a warehouse or he's, yeah, he's you know, <laughs> he's earning every damn penny he makes. Yeah, he does. He's crushing it. Uh, okay, this is funny. Uh, Phil Levon has mentioned his influences range from Cannibal Corpse, Metallica, Iron Maiden, Pantera, and even many 80s hair metal bands. And I'm glad you bring this up, Dead Fish Cheese Spread, because I Wikipedia Phil here and I. Some of his other influences include Sarah McLachlan, Garth Brooks, Snoop Dogg, Taylor Swift, Carly Rae Jepsen. Is this true? That's all true. <laughs> um, I'm a 90s kid. And I so I mean, I, I went to the Lilith Fair multiple times by no. myself. What? A girl did by- not drag you? No, I went myself. I'm a huge fan of Sarah McLachlan. Have been for ever and ever since the, you know, since the 90s. Um oh, Oh God, so good, so good. <laughs> Fumbling towards ecstasy is my is my favorite record. Um, but uh, I love all of her stuff. I I bought all of her old stuff, all of her '80s stuff, the stuff that was super inspired by uh, um, um, Peter Gabriel because he was a big influence on her. Um, I'm a big fan of Taylor Swift, definitely huge fan of Taylor Swift. I think that she's probably the like the best songwriter going right now. Right. Like Do you, you think she say, writes her own songs? Well, she definitely does, yeah. Okay. She doesn't write them by herself. She writes with other writers, but she's definitely like working. She's writing her songs. Most can of her songs. Tell, most like professional musicians as yourself, like you know who's writing their own songs and who's not. You can kind of tell. I mean, you can't tell in the writing unless you really know the stuff that they themselves wrote and the stuff that other people wrote. So like you could figure out the style that she does if you knew the stuff that she wrote as opposed to the stuff that other people wrote, most likely you'll never really know that because the the way that it works is everyone that's in the room or working on it gets kind of credit. So you don't know who actually came up with what part. Okay. I do think that she writes her own stuff, specifically her lyrics. And that's, I think where her, where she really shines is in her, is in her lyrics because her lyrics are very personal and they're, they're really, 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 really well crafted. The first line, you know what the song's about all the time. You're like, by the end of the first line, you are in the story. There's not, you, she's not warming you up. Right away, you're there. She drags you right into the story. And the like, chorus, boom, John Mary's yeah. dick is small. You're yeah. like, oh, I know what this <laughs> song is about. I, I, I imagine that's probably not true, but either way. <laughs> that's, um, a, that's a B-side, yeah. I've heard, I've heard stories, but, uh, but anyways. <laughs> but but that and and her chorus is always the chorus tells the story for the whole song the the verses and the pre-choruses expand on it but you know the story in the chorus so her ability to relate a story and like a song is is top notch i i don't think that there's anybody in in modern music that's that's got their finger on the pulse of of how people want a song delivered to them uh, any wow. better than Taylor Swift. So, you know, you can have, people can have their preferences about the way songs are written and what they think songs should do and et cetera. But I don't think that anyone is 
like I said, has, I don't think there's anyone out there currently that has their finger on the pulse better than Taylor Swift. And I think that that's evidenced by, you know, she broke Ticketmaster recently mm. and, and everything she puts out goes a billion times platinum or whatever, you know, I, I think that, that it's hard to argue when the results are that kind of stuff. People what can say it? it's marketing, but it's not marketing. It's not just commercials, you know? What is it about Taylor that makes her so good at that? I think it's the I think it's the 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 stories that she tells and the way that she relates them. People like like our biggest song is oh, there's two songs that that are like our biggest two right. There's a song called Two Weeks and a song called What If I Was Nothing. Both of them are about chicks. One's a really metally metal song, right? It's aggressive and half of it like I'm I'm I scream and sing the whole thing, but it's a metal song, purely metal song. Right. You might not know it's about a chick, but if you read it, you're like, okay, there's, there's like a kind of relationship thing in it. And people come to me and they're like, man, I totally got what you were saying. Then there's this other song I wrote called what if I was nothing and holy shit, that one, I nailed what dudes are constantly trying to say to their girlfriend. Right. I, and it was just me explaining a, an argument that I had with my at the time wife. You know, I was just, we were talking and I'm like, you know, what if you're wrong? Like mm. she was mad about something and she was like, oh, you know, you don't love me. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, fucking, what if you're wrong? Like, what if you're not right? What if all this shit you're worried about doesn't matter? And people got that. Wow. You know, and dudes are like, dudes have come up to me so many times. And they're like, thank you so much for writing that song. It helped me explain this to my girl. It saved my marriage, blah, 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 blah. Wow. You know, and it's like, it's a huge, huge deal. And it worked well because it was me talking about a fight that I had with, you know, the woman that I loved at the time. And that's, that's what, that's what songs are. So like music and writing music and writing musical pieces is not the same thing as songwriting. Like, I think it was D Bob Dylan that said a great song is just four chords in the truth. The truth part is what people care about. The melodies and, and stuff like that, you know, I mean, you've heard the whole four chord song, right? Like you can take mm -hmm. the any song and play. They they do the, this melody of or, or whatever they call it, a uh, hundred songs over the same kind of chord progression and stuff. The music isn't as important as the story. Because the story is what people love because it's how that story is about them. That's why people love music when it comes to like, like songs, you can, you can love dancing and people love dance music because they love dance and stuff. But like when it comes to songwriting and people that love songs, you, you love songs because of the story in the song. So. And with that, with that song, uh, it sounds like you were able the what if I was nothing, it sounds like you were able to convey to people like the, like the whole the whole deal with being in fights in a relationship it's like you, there's no uh like both people can't win and sometimes it's like when you trust and love someone you have to be willing to like sometimes take that leap you have to put your ego down and be like okay like yeah what if i'm wrong what if i'm this is coming from my past issues what if i'm making things up what if i'm paranoid what if i like want to see something wrong like is this about power dynamics is this about a past wrong um, mm -hmm. you just have to realize like, okay, yeah, getting along is more important than winning an argument. I don't know. I'm, I'm great at being told that I'm wrong. I think it's a skill <laughs> that a lot of women need to develop. <laughs> well, I mean, at, at the very least in the context, you know, it was like, look, you know, uh, I was trying to explain that I'm like, I'm just trying to explain, look, I love you. You know, it's like, I'm like, well, what if you're all your, the things you're afraid about? And you're, you're all this stuff you're fighting about. What if it's nothing? And, and what if I'm telling you the truth and like, you're just scared, you know? So anyway, yeah. All fights happen over. What if? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. All the time. <laughs> no use for pants. Love seeing you uh, <laughs> making the rounds fill FNT soon. Oh yeah. That would be great. If you were interested. What's FNT? <gasps> Friday Night Tice. It's a show that I'm on every Friday on. Gary oh, with the Beagler's Neurotic guys. Channel. Neurotic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, did, I, I didn't know that. I didn't. I know. I, I know Friday Night Tice. I didn't know NFT. Uh, FNT. You would be Anyways. so perfect. Let me see what I can do there. <laughs> Put in a good okay. word. Don't know this guy, but he blocked me on Twitter. Oh no! Have you oh. ever blocked someone on Twitter? I am. I How block people be? on Twitter all the time. <laughs> I am. You probably I, annoy 
hide him. That well, that's the thing. Like I am, I I don't take it. Like don't take it personally if I block you. Like uh, I block people. Like if I see an interaction between two people that I have nothing to do with, and one person is like just I don't like the way they're interacting, I'll block them. Like I'm yeah. just like because I I shape my Twitter experience for me. It's not yeah. for other people. So like, you're welcome to follow me. If you, if you want to say, you know, crappy things and I see it and I don't like it, I might block you. I might get into an argument with you. I don't know. It's all about how I feel. And uh, you know, sometimes I happens. block people, not all the time, but like, yeah, if you are annoying to me, it's the same thing. And th you see this a lot with people who are butthurt who get blocked by comedians that go, Oh, so-and-so's yeah. a snowflake and blocked me because they couldn't handle a joke. And it's like, it never has to do with someone's ability to handle or not handle a joke. It's just that like you specifically are annoying or you were like up that person's ass or like mm -hmm. you did something that was annoying. That's why you got blocked. Like comedians have very thick skin and it's, it's not because it was a joke. It never comes down to like a joke. It's like mm -hmm. you were either annoying. It's not like, Oh, I got offended. It's like, no, I just, did not need your personal expression uh, on my internet. And it's fair to say that, you know, if I'm, if you're hanging out with your friends or I'm hanging out with my friends and we say things to each other, that's fine. And just because you see me talk to other people that I'm familiar with on Twitter in a certain way, doesn't mean that you can talk to me that way. Or like someone that I'm friends with, like if a friend of mine says, you know, calls me a name or something, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to think anything of it, but if someone else does, I might, you know, it yeah. might be like, who are you talking to? You know, depending on the topic, depending on, you know, so context matters. And when it comes to like the internet, it's probably better to not try to make a joke where you're insulting, mm -hmm. like make a joke. That's funny. Insult. If you want to insult fine, but don't insult with a joke. Don't make a joke. That's an insult. And then when someone says, Oh, that's an insult and doesn't see that it's a joke says this guy is trying to insult me so screw off don't get surprised when they assumed you were trying to insult them not right if you're trying to make a joke you better be damn sure that your joke is funnier than it is insulting because if yeah. it's more insulting than it is funny like then you've lost yeah yeah and so. that's something a lot of people don't really know how to do kevin brady i own both folklore and the fall of ideals <laughs> on vinyl perfect yes good yes I love serving I can't, I can't do that scream like you can. Matthew Hammond, people like authenticity. You can hear the connection when someone wrote a song, and when it is put through an algorithm, it loses some of the magic. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Gotta be magical. Wow, we talked about everything. You were a Marine? Uh, for a minute. I got, an, I got an honorable discharge, but I didn't do anything worth talking about. And it was in the 90s. Okay. And, and because the thing is, like, there's so many people, and I say this a lot, but there's so many people out there that have done, like, the the stolen valor thing. And I mm -hmm. and and since I didn't do anything, I got a medical discharge because I, I got hurt in training. I didn't do anything. I got sent home. I did graduate boot camp, so I am a Marine. I, I officially did it. You but did they sent me home. Yeah, you know, I did the, I did the whole thing. Um, but there are people that have lost limbs and and have real, 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 real hard lives because they were in the military. And I don't ever want to tr I don't ever want anyone to think that I'm trying to be like, look at how I did this cool thing by joining the military. When there are people that have really sacrificed and really, really, really been uh, been heart hurt and stuff like that. Like, I don't ever want to be that guy that's doing the whole or assumed to do the whole stolen valor thing like real people have re lived real lives and given real sacrifices i sh i showed up and then they sent me home so it's not worth really talking about so that's kind of like my experience on america's got talent um i was in it just enough to have a credit <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah like, it's yeah, not really a comedy friendly show <laughs> <laughs> well, and the thing is it's like i mean you are like a professional comedian too like you're doing comedy for work you're an entertainer you know so uh it's funny that i compared america's got talent to serving in the military okay <laughs> matthew Hammond. i'm a fan of female singer songwriters because of authenticity one of the best is katie tungstall yeah. even when messing up kills it i liked her yeah katie's great you know who followed me on twitter and and blew my mind katie uh, no the, the 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 woman that sang bitch 
I'm a bitch. I'm yes. a lover. I'm I was a like, that's so cool that she followed that? me. I was like, I'm a big fan uh, of her. I Melissa, love that song. Marissa something. I don't know, but I I I was kind of impressed. I was like, man, this is cool. I have to find, I have to read Rose McGowan that. follows me on Twitter too, which is super cool. What? Wow, I'm yeah. jealous. Meredith Brooks. Yes, Meredith Brooks. Wow. You know who Eliza Blue is? Eliza Blue is. Yes, I love one. Eliza. Yes. Yeah, so Eliza's wonderful and she she's uh homies with uh with Rose and I made a comment or something like that and and Rose was like liked it or whatever and she was and so like she was like nice and followed me. Super nice. And but I am super super like I admire Eliza so much. Like she is so great and she Ballsy. really yeah so ballsy and so courageous and so great so i can't say enough good things about eliza she's great yeah i i love her i i supported her from day one our paths met and now she's awesome. like too busy to do my show again i'm like <laughs> i love it i'm like no yep. bye yeah like do she's it awesome. get, and she's doing it. her and her and rose are doing a, a a space i think tomorrow so take a look on her it'll be on her on her her twitter page you can follow okay her. cool so, you're very uh generous about promoting other people phil I'm I want to see people that I like succeed. Mm -hmm. Same Z's. Um, Bill, where can people follow you and what's coming up and anything else you'd like the people to know? I am Phil that remains on Twitter. Um, I am Phil that remains official on Instagram because they booted me from Instagram before for literally no reason. And they uh -oh. didn't give me a reason, nothing. They're just like, get out of here. I had the, the the blue check and everything, and they're like, get out of here. And I don't talk politics on Instagram. Politics. Is when did you get Twitter. booted from Instagram? Right around the election. Oh, I lost. I lost an Instagram like March of twenty one because mm. I posted something about herbs in my story, and they thought I was doing COVID uh, yeah. disinformation. So yeah, I'm Phil. That remains. It's that's the easiest way to follow me. The band is all that remains. A T R H Q on Twitter. Uh, all that remains music on YouTube, uh, all that remains on Spotify, all those kind of things. Uh, yeah. And you're on and Twitch. We, I am. I, I haven't streamed much lately, but I do have a Twitch channel. Um, okay. mostly I'm mostly I'm on, uh, I'm on Twitter though. That's kind of the, the, the thing I'm very terrible at self-promotion. I'm very bad at schedules as well. So I'm but on you're Twitter. So much better. You're very comfortable promoting other people. Notice that you're like. <laughs> well, I mean, kidding. I don't. I, I, I like, like I said, the, the people that I've been promoting, honestly, are are doing important work too. Like, it's not just, it's not just like, oh, check out my friend's band or whatever. Like the stuff that Eliza does and and the stuff that James Lindsay does. Like, I think that that they're doing important things. So you're doing important things too, though. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. You're so humble. Um, everyone follow Phil. Phil, we'll have to have you back. I'll see if I can get you on FNT. I can't I'd love imagine it. why they would not want that. You're fun and easy to talk to and funny and based. Uh, everybody, <laughs> thank you for watching. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for your comments and questions. And we will see you next.